Hey guys, what's up? Drew here. Um, hope you guys are staying safe during this pandemic and you're having a great time socially distancing. For those of you guys who love the practice room, this is probably like super normal. For those of you guys who don't, well, time to learn to love the practice room, I guess, right? Innovative Percussion asked me to shoot a technique video, uh, something to keep you guys busy while you guys are all homebound, while we're all homebound. So I wanted to talk about um, dampening. So what I wanted to do is get into the basics of dampening. And there's two fundamental things that you want to understand when it comes to dampening uh, on the vibraphone. The idea is that you want each note to flow seamlessly into the note that follows. This is the reason why just using your pedal wouldn't work. So for example, if I'm just using the pedal and I'm playing this note and I want to play the next note while not having that ring, I'll release that note, repedal the note, release that note, repedal the note, thereby causing that space between the sound. If I want to keep the pedal down, you have an opposite problem where now you have notes ringing together and causing a lack of clarity. The fundamental idea is that you want to be able to create the kind of connectivity between notes and the kind of phrasing that you want without having those gaps. And dampening is a really key way to be able to do that. The second consideration that you want to understand is more of a technical one. And that's where the rebound goes after each stroke. Now, depending on what stroke type you're doing will depend on where your rebound is going. So for example, if you're doing follow dampening, that's where you'd play a line with one hand and the other hand would follow behind it and dampen. So perhaps you're going up this way, this hand would dampen behind it or vice versa, this hand would dampen behind it. Each time you play a note, the hand that's following behind it would be going to the node to prep to dampen for the note to follow. So here's an example. As you play, I play that note. This hand is already facing downward, and it could actually be even touching the node as we play it. And so I push down and I slide forward. So as this hand plays, this hand's already on the node. It's already touching. There's no sound on the node. That's why we tell you as a default technique never to play on the node um, because there's no real vibration that happens there. And then you slide forward. And now the slide is what you want to focus on. That slide you want to take place as you strike the next note. So here's the first note, this hand is here. As I strike the next note, I slide. So that's the motion that you want to be able to create. And so as you follow here, slide. And as I lift, my prep stroke for my dampening hand is going back to that note. Back to the note, back to the note. Same thing as I go in reverse. Here's my prep, 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 prep. Now your prep stroke changes if you're doing same hand dampening. What same hand dampening is, is that the same hand that just played a note is now turning into the dampening hand. So for example, if I play this note and I want to dampen with that same hand, my prep stroke won't come back up, but instead will go right toward the node so I can slide and dampen. So you're not touching, right? And you're going down, sliding right over to prepare yourself to be successful for that dampened note. So here's an example. Here's my prep. My prep. Again, pedal stays down. The slide and the stroke happen at the same time. a great way to create connectivity with your lines and really enhance your phrasing behind the vibraphone. Big thanks to Innovative Percussion for inspiring me to do this little video for you guys. Um, grab some DT mallets, some Drew Tucker mallets, DT1s. They're beautiful. They sound great. And uh, I hope you guys are all staying safe out there.